All right, what is up YouTube? Cordless here. Today I'm going to run you through setting up the uh, print Unil client and server, which is running OpenVPN on an Ubuntu instance running on Google Cloud. Now, full disclaimer, you do need to be able to have uh, access to a Google Cloud account. So if you haven't done that already, head on over to console.cloud.google.com. It'll throw you through some of the uh, things that you need to do to sign up for Google Cloud. And uh, once you do that, uh, you'll get a $300 credit. You will have to give them a credit card number, unfortunately, but that's just the way it works. And, um, and then once you are able to do that, you're going to pop into the uh, Google Cloud terminal console. This is a container that's running on Google Cloud that gives you a prompt. And then it'll let you keep all the stuff that you shove in here, just like a, a Unix box would on your local machine. I am doing this setup today on a Windows 10 box. You could just as easily do this on the Mac. All right, so start out. Um, one of the things that you will need to do, head on over to client.printunil.com and download either the Mac or the Windows uh, client. You're going to need one of those, obviously, to be able to connect to the VPN server once you get it deployed. I would mention the reason that you're wanting to deploy a VPN server of your own on Google Cloud as well. You, you don't want to use your IP address of wherever you are. You want to, maybe you're in a place you don't trust the internet connection, or maybe you're heading off to somewhere on the internet that you don't want to use your uh, normal IP address, maybe your house IP address or work IP address, and you want to be able to use a dynamic IP that Google assigns you in the moment. I will mention that this script is going to start a preemptible instance, which will shut off after 24 hours, which is kind of nice especially if you're watching your pennies. So uh, keep in mind that it will shut off. If you want to fix that, you can certainly take out the preemptible entry here and, uh, and use that uh, permanent, uh, permanently deployed machine for uh, accessing the internet. So without further ado, to, we're going to need to clone this, uh, this repo. This, it's a guest repo. You're going to go over and you log into your Google Cloud console, make a directory for it, and then you're going to do a git clone and just paste in that uh, git URL. It's going to pop it into a, um, a, you know, a hash directory. So I'm going to go ahead and move that over to VPN just so it can make it easy to think about where it's at. And then I'm going to change the permissions on this. I've just been lazy and didn't bother checking in a, a one that has the execute bit started uh, set so that you can start it. And then I'm just going to hit start VPN SH. I mean, it's just as simple as that. Not really any more complicated than that. It's going to do some stuff and I'm going to have to take a break here because it'll take a few minutes to start it. But uh, once it's started, uh, then we'll resume the setup. So I'll see you again here in just a second. All right, so I'm assuming that this thing is already started. Uh, if you go in and look at your Google, uh, at the console, at your Google Cloud dashboard, it should show up in here. It'll have a four letter hash at the end of it and you can click on that. And one of the things that you're gonna need to do is when you click on this uh, URL, it's kind of a nifty feature of Google's uh, shell, is that they let you click on those things. Uh, it isn't going to be, S, the SSL uh, cert on this is not going to be valid, so you are going to have to go ahead and click on it, advanced and be dangerous and head on over to it, but it is your machine, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. Uh, you will need to grab the uh, serial port output uh, or the logs of this. Uh, it's going to spit out a setup key, which you have to put in here. So you just to click on the serial port logs. You can also do that from the console, but I'm just doing it this way because it's easier. And then click on save, and it's going to go ahead and save that, and then you're going to have to do the same rigmarole again. And then it's going to ask you for the username and password. Now, this is just a default that uh, Print Unil uses. Now here, um, I'm just going to change this to admin and some insecure password, which is gonna tell me I'm using a weak password. I'm not gonna use a good password here, there's no point. And I'm gonna click on save. Now, I'm gonna to have to sort of remember how to do this, but uh, I think I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna click on add organization. 
right? Uh, so that's, uh, in my case, Stack Geek. And then I'm going to add a user, and that'll be cordless. And I guess you can enter our, enter whatever, this is optional? Yeah, it's optional, I'm not going to do it. And I think you have to enter a six-digit pin here. So I just use some insecure pin. And, uh, and now I'm going to go, let's see here. It says uh, organization must be attached to the server. So now I have to create a server. So I'm going to click add server. I'm going to call this Steve. And I'm going to copy this port number because I'm going to have to go and set up the VPN or the uh, firewall to allow the VPN uh, to be able to use this particular port it's picked. And I'm not going to enable any of this other crap. I suppose you could, but whatever. I'm not going to do that in this guide, so you're on your own. And then I'm just going to click on uh, server must have, oh, attach organization. So I'm going to attach Stack Geek. That just allows you to take the users that are in the org and attach them to the server that you that you uh, created. And then I'm going to start the server. So uh, before I forget, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to go to firewall rules. And um, then I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to call this uh, VPN. And optional is, so that's great. And then here, I am just going to actually do this for all my instances. I run all this very small Kubernetes cluster that I restart all the time. I don't really care if, uh, you know, all of my instances are open to this, this UDP port. It's not going to hurt anything. Nothing's listening on it. So that's all done. Now again, remember you need the VPN client. I've already installed that on my machine. So I'm good to go. So I'm going to actually just tell it to uh, go ahead and start that up. <clears throat> and what you need to do is you need to go over to your users, uh, the user that you created and click to download the profile, which is going to download this profile, which I did earlier just to test it. And then I'm going to say import profile. And that's this one. And then uh, there it show, shows that I, I, it, it imported it. Now I tried to use the URI, but it gave me a JavaScript error. I think this is this print, print unal thing is uh, written in JavaScript. And uh, now it's asking for that pin, which I'm going to type in. So you'll need to type in your pin there and it popped up the server address and now I'm connected. So now keep in mind, my IP address should be 35227188.75. Uh, and lo and behold, that's exactly what it is. And I mean, seriously, you can make it easier than that. I'm done. And uh, well, with that, I'll bid you adieu and happy sec opping. Things are getting dangerous. Be sure and educate yourselves and use the best technologies and stay safe. Cordless out.